Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Keisha, and in today's video, I actually had to see what my last video was. Um, I wanted to talk about how basically castor oil failed me. I tried it twice and it didn't work, but then I realized I put up a week 40 pregnancy update um, a few weeks ago, so clearly you guys know the castor oil didn't work for me. Um, just to briefly talk about the castor oil, um, I think it didn't work for me because number one, I wasn't ready. Number two, um, my cervix was was closed. It was never open. It is definitely recommended for you to take castor oil when you're a little bit open, a little bit dilated. And I was shut in um, knowing further on. Um, my cervix was actually really, really far. It did bring me contractions and all that stuff. But overall, it was a fail for me. Um, I definitely don't knock it. And I definitely recommend it because it, it does have um, some, you know, it does bring some people into labor or start their labor or break their waters. So, you know, do your own research on that. But anyway, um, I guess I'll talk about my birth story. I wasn't expecting to do that in this video, but um, I guess that's where I am. Last video was 40 weeks, which was, uh, woof, Wednesday, no, it was Thursday. January 28th that was the last video I believe I posted I was 40 weeks pregnant in one day I had an appointment on February no yes February 2nd and that was a stress test and that's just uh, monitoring the fluids in the body making sure you know they're moving and all that stuff and my induction was supposed to be scheduled for that Friday, which I believe was the 5th. And when I actually got the notification, they scheduled me for Monday, which would have been the 8th of February. And um, that would have put me at almost 42 weeks. It would have been 41 weeks and six days, five or six days, something around there. So let's just go to my appointment, go back to my appointment, February 2nd. I had the appointment um, from the monitor standpoint, she wasn't moving. Honestly, I didn't eat much. Um, I really didn't have an appetite that day and this girl didn't move at all. Um, usually they tell you if your kid isn't moving, um, drink some water, drink something sugary, eat something sugary, or eat something in general. Like I said, because I didn't eat, she really wasn't moving. It wasn't really a, oh my God, to me, because I know this girl moves 24-7. So I was just like, she's just chilling. Like, she just don't want to leave, clearly. So um, even when they put her on the ultrasound, she just wouldn't move. Her heart rate was pretty stabilized and they wanted it to get to like 130 150 135 like move around a lot and she just wasn't doing like literally she was just chilling in there um and i was basically monitored for almost an hour because of this reason another thing was my fluids were really low i wasn't leaking any fluid but because of the fact that my stomach really wasn't that big number one number two she was actually bigger than my son so um there's that so she was taking up a little bit more space and that's kind of especially at almost 41 weeks clearly it's not good enough to stay in there so long story short i go into the doctor's appointment which was actually at the hospital and they tell me i can't leave basically i'm delivering today um the doctor came in she told me that um you know the fluids look really low she's not moving and especially because i'm so late you might as well just take her out i mean and they wanted me to wait a whole nother week to have this kid not like next the next day or two days a whole week so they were like no we're just gonna do it today i had no i had no diaper bag um i think my son was at daycare like it was just like so unplanned especially it's COVID too <laughs> It was like my mom was supposed to be here like it, it was a snowstorm like it was just so crazy i know in my area of pennsylvania like the tri-state area like new york new jersey um, pennsylvania delaware around that area we were getting snow from sunday to tuesday and this was the last day it snowed but it was still extremely nasty outside you guys know snow just doesn't melt like that um it was snow from like tuesday to friday or tuesday to sunday um so anyway I was like, what can I do? She was like, um, I can't eat. I have to stay there. So literally, like I said, I was in the hospital. So I went from that floor all the way to labor and delivery. Um, she talked to me about, you know, let me check if you're dilated. I still wasn't dilated. Like, 
40 weeks and six days and I still wasn't dilated. And like I said in previous videos, their whole thing is C-section. So I cried for maybe uh, 10 minutes in there because number one, clearly I'm having this baby by myself in the OR. My mom isn't here, so she can't watch my son. My son's father has to, you know, stay home and watch him. Um, and that wasn't the part I was mad at. I was actually fine being by myself. It's just the whole thing of the recovery. I was like, dang, another C-section. And if you guys have never had um, a C-section, usually the first one is pretty cool. Mine, amazing, snatched right back up. But um, yeah, number two, ooh, a little bit more painful, a little bit more, a lot of bit more blood. And ugh, it was just like, if you guys want to learn or you guys want to know my experiences with my C-sections, definitely let me know. But um, so that was the one doctor. And I believe, you know, she asked me for my date of birth. They always ask you for your date of birth just to confirm. Like they say, what's your name? What's your date of birth? So I told her my date of birth and she was like, oh, we have the same date of birth. So, she, so long story short, this was a young doctor. Now, a seasoned doctor came in, you know, there's always multiple doctors coming in, and she said, I want to check you. She checked me, almost killed me, and she told me I can actually have a natural birth, and she can stick a balloon in me. Um, she thinks I'm good enough for her to put a balloon in me. Now, this was probably two hours after they told me I was having a C-section. They told me what time I'm having the C-section. I signed the paperwork for the C-section, and I'm not knocking this other doctor, um, I actually really liked her and I wish she would have came in in the beginning because I would have been like, yes, vaginal birth. But because she came in after I cried, after I signed the paperwork, after this lady, the, the younger lady checked me, I was just like, you know what? I'm not getting the vaginal. Um, the vaginal would have been like a lot longer. I don't even know if it would have worked. Like, you know, it's just like so many emotions going on. I'm by myself. So I ended up having the C-section. Um, it was supposed to be around eight or nine o'clock and that's because I actually ate something, uh, pasta and they, you know, they don't want anything in your stomach, especially because they're opening you up. So I had to wait eight hours. So I went in at two, my appointment was at one o'clock. I ate around what, 12 o'clock. So they wanted me to wait until about eight or nine o'clock. Um, she was born at 10 47 PM and I was on that operating table for about an hour and a half after I had the C-section. They let me know that, you know, naturally I had a lot of um, scar tissue with my first C-section. So it took them a little bit longer to, you know, sew me up or whatever the hell they're doing. Um, and I lost a lot of blood. Uh, ooh, that just makes me like cringe. They had to like push on my stomach just to make sure like the blood was coming out, uh, which, oh my God, that was so painful. Um... All I can say was it was definitely a lot more painful. I couldn't, um, I could not hold her without assistance. Like, you know, doctors are coming in probably every 30 minutes, to every hour. And I would just be like, can you give me my daughter? Like, so I can feed her and stuff. Not in a rude way. Like, they're there to help you. Um, so I was just like, you know, can I, um, can you help me? I couldn't lift up. I couldn't really do anything. It was very, very, very painful. Um, I say all of this to say I still left the hospital before 48 hours with my son I had him on Monday I went in on Sunday for my induction but I had him early Monday morning like 5 48 in the morning and um I left Wednesday afternoon around one o'clock now her I had her at ooh, Tuesday 10 47 p.m. and I was out of the hospital by Thursday 12 p.m. so that wasn't even 48 hours um, as long as I can shower by myself I use the bathroom by myself um, I was walking and that's basically it I felt like there was no reason to really be in the hospital I think like the best thing this time was there's like an automated doctor like a robot doctor that you can text and they actually um text you when you're not texting them just like reminders and all that stuff make sure you're walking make sure um you're changing the diaper make sure you're feeding every two to four hours, you know like stuff like that um so you know i would like ask her questions all the time just so that um i'm not calling the hospital or going to the er because like i said this was definitely a different experience than my son um but overall, like I said, she's here, she's healthy, super happy she's actually asleep right now. Um, I'll introduce you guys in a later video. 
Um, but this video will be up today. Today is February 17th, a Wednesday? I believe, to, yes, today is Wednesday. So this video will be up today. Um, uh, you probably will see this get up a lot because I will be trying to um, knock out some more videos. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, definitely let me know down below. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.